Good afternoon, this is Sean Golden with Golden and Golden, here to discuss the basics of residence by investment, RBI, who it benefits, what it gives you, what it doesn't, and whether you're a good candidate for it. So the idea is when a person uh, wants to expatriate, they need a second citizenship, right? So in, in that sort of situation where someone is um, doesn't have dual nationality or uh, just is a U.S. citizen by birth, they have to go out and they have to get a second passport that requires citizenship in another country. Residence by investment is a little bit different. Uh, with residence by investment, it gives a person an opportunity to reside in that country. It gives them certain travel rights, depending. One of the most popular ones you've probably heard about is Portugal, although that's that's being modified a bit in 2021, 2022. But the idea is when you get residence in another country, it doesn't give you the opportunity uh, at the outset, at least, to, uh, to get a passport. So, for example, let's say you're a U.S. citizen, you want to expatriate, you have to get second citizenship somewhere else. You go, oh man, I love Portugal, buy a place in Lisbon and just settle in, I'll get a golden visa there. That's not gonna work right now, right? Because you need citizenship, which means you need a second passport, which means you have to go the CBI route. When it comes to residence by investment, it's a little bit different. Residence by investment oftentimes is for people who already have citizenship in another country and is just looking for travel rights and or the ability to reside and work in a certain country, which may not be given because there may not be any kind of visa agreement between the country of citizenship that the person has after they give up their U.S. citizenship and the requirements in that particular country. So the couple things to keep in mind with residence by investment, at least at the outset, you're not doing it in order to get a passport. Now, over time, once you've been a resident for a certain amount of time, the country may offer you that opportunity. You've been a resident here for five years. Here's the next steps you need in order to become a citizen. But in and of itself, if you're a U.S. citizen, you don't have a second uh, citizenship, then just getting an RBI is not going to be sufficient in order to allow you to expatriate because you can't be stateless. You have to be a citizen of at least one other country normally in order for them to approve it. With residents, you know, when you're a citizen of a country, you basically get all the rights. You could work there, live there, go to school there, yada, yada. Uh, when you're a resident, it really does vary on the country. Some countries with residents by investment, for example, they don't allow you to work in that country for a certain amount of time, or they don't allow you to make certain investments, or they don't allow you to use the schools there. So if you're moving there, you got kids, something to consider. Uh, in terms of the application process, it will vary depending on which particular RBI a person applies for. Some of them are relatively simple. Uh, some of them have a, an enormous amount of information required for a background check, and that can take a very long time. So it's important to determine uh, whether or not the particular program is good for you. In addition, if your plan is to expatriate, then it's important to kind of figure out what the tax ramifications would be in the particular RBI versus where you have citizenship. So the way most countries work is they don't tax you on your worldwide income, right? You could be a citizen of a country, but unless you're residing in that country, normally more than six months, you're not going to be taxed on your worldwide income. There could be certain wealth and other taxes. There could be certain uh, taxes for income source within that country. And those rates may vary depending on whether the person is a resident of that country or not. But from a baseline perspective, just because you're a citizen of a country doesn't mean that they're going to tax you on your worldwide income. So if you have citizenship in a certain country, let's say, but that's not where you want to reside, that's where the RBI may come into effect. And you're like, oh, you know, I want to live in country F. Uh, the, the visa rights between the country of citizenship I have and, uh, and country F they don't really work that well so maybe i'll become an rbi for from country f and that way you get all the rights that you particularly would want living in that particular country a few considerations when applying for an rbi one uh, does the person want to become a citizen of that country down the line or is it just for residence purposes if it's just for residence purposes then it's important to look into what happens after you reside there for a certain amount of time uh, what are the tax ramifications specifically two do they have children, right? If you're if you're going to be moving there in a certain country, you know the ability to work, the ability to invest, and the ability to go to school sometimes will vary. Some of these residences you purchase uh, through investment don't allow you to do that. Um, and then of course the tax consequences, sourcing rules. Uh, are you considered a resident of that country? Because even if you get RBI, right, that doesn't mean you necessarily have to live there for six months, right? If you only live there for three months, then there then the resident the tax rules for being a resident in the RBI country will differ depending on the amount of time 
um, that you reside in that country, are you considered a resident, quote unquote, uh, for tax purposes? Uh, you also want to make sure that just getting the RBI isn't going to make you a resident for tax purposes by default. Most countries don't do that, but you, you want to triple check, right? It's your money. Um, if you're considering expatriation, you're considering getting an RBI, kind of figure out what the tax issues and implications are. You can always go to our websites, goldenlawyers.com, expatriationattorneys.com. If you want to, you can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.